three years ago when this ballpark opened, it started a revolution that transcended the way minor league baseball approached everything. Today, the minor's biggest park will host its biggest star. From Coca-Cola Field in downtown Buffalo, New York, the Syracuse Chiefs will take on the Buffalo Bisons. Up in the broadcast booth with my partner, Duke McGuire, my name is Ben Wagner. Today, Steven Strasburg will make his final scheduled start in player development. And Duke, it's one thing to read about Steven Strasburg. It's another thing to actually watch the man work out on the hill. Oh, I'm very excited, as are the Bisons, to see him here this afternoon. We saw him throwing on his side the other day, but look at the assortment of pitches. Look at the late movement there. Here he's just going to blow a fastball right by a... And, you know, look at this. After he throws a 98-mile-an-hour fastball, the changeup right there. He is filthy. Plus, he can feel his position. Here you see him start the 1-6-3 double play. According to all the scouts, this guy can do it all. He's been able to do it at the collegiate level. And as a professional, the crowds continue to build. So how is it for Steven Strasburg to actually live being Steven Strasburg? It's, it's it's great to pitch in front of a crowd like that and you know to have all these kids you know watching and everything it, you know hopefully uh, you know someday they can they can be in my position you know because it's, it's a lot of fun and on the other side for the Buffalo Bisons Dylan G the other right-hander in this ball game has a six and one mark Duke you have to think flying under the radar will be his advantage today hey, six and one is nothing to sneeze at right there there you see a big breaking ball another one great outing his last start against Toledo nine strikeouts in six innings against a tough Toledo Mud Hen ball club so this could be a great pitchers duel today as they have been all season long all eyes will point to Steven Strasburg in downtown Buffalo when we come back baseball here in Buffalo, New York. The story Buffalo Bisons take on a throughway Cup Series rival in the Syracuse Chiefs. Let's have a look at the starting lineups. First for the visiting Syracuse Chiefs, a very aggressive lineup for manager Trent Jewett. Boomer Whiting joined this team on Monday and hasn't slowed down at all. This ball club aggressive on the base pads, 51 stolen bases. And they got a little stronger with the addition of Justin Maxwell as well coming back from the big leagues. Yeah, just back from the big leagues, and what a spark Boomer Whiting has given them. He has really it's an infusion of speed into this lineup. The defensive alignment for manager Ken Overfell. It took a hit losing catcher Josh Tolley last night. He was clocked on the noggin on the follow through by Josh Weitzel. Out for precautionary reasons today. And infielder Daniel Murphy is not in the lineup. He's headed back to New York to be evaluated at the hospital for special surgery after being collided with trying to turn a double play in last night's contest. Things did not look good. You saw the rest of the defensive lineman for the Bisons with Servanac, Feliciano, and Adams in the outfield. Espin and Todd on the left side with Turner and Jacobs on the right side. That is manager Trent Jewett at the helm for the first time in Syracuse. His second season in the Nationals organization after better than two decades being a player, on staff, and then a manager in the Pittsburgh Pirates player development system. Dark shades for manager Ken Obergfell, leaning on his post, always at the post. Ken Obergfell in the Buffalo Bisons. Back for his second straight year. Ricky Bonus, the pitching coach as well. Mentoring some of the young arms in player development for the New York Mets, including Dylan G. He was shut down a year ago. Ten months of rigorous rehab, but throwing the best that he has in over a year. Well, you know, his last start, he, you know, he touched 90, 91 on the radar gun, which he, we really hadn't seen that all season long. He's got an excellent straight change, good breaking ball. He's got to mix him up a little bit, hit his spots, but he had nine strikeouts in six innings against a pretty good Toledo Mud Hen ball club. So if he can give you another outing like that, uh, we, we could have a real fine game here today. Game time and temperature brought to you by Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, always fresh. We'll get started seven minutes after the top of the hour. A picture perfect afternoon here on the shores of Lake Erie in western New York. 70 degrees, should heat up to be about in the mid 70s. The humidity is down. And if anything is similar to what we've seen afternoon baseball here recently, Duke, there's a chance for some long balls because of the way the ball has been carrying since the calendar turned into June. Yeah, I, this, this homestand, the ball has really been jumping. It's been very warm in here and very humid. And not quite as humid today, so we'll see you know, what, you know, what kind of a path the ball will take today. But this has been an exciting homestand. It really has. This ball has been jumping. 
24 year old Dylan G fires the first pitch of the afternoon and it misses just a little bit low for ball one on Boomer Whiting. Whiting calling up from the Carolina League and has been immediate impact for this Chiefs lineup. G evens the counted one ball and one strike. Left fielder now five for ten at the plate overall since coming up from the Potomac Nationals. Went three for three in his debut. Reached base all five times he got to the dish. There's the breaking ball from Dylan G. Just missed though and it's two and one. And this is a guy that you can't put on the base pads right now. He's already had four stolen bases in the three ball game. So if you walk this guy you're basically you're walking a double and maybe even a triple. Thought about the swing but takes the strike to even the count on Dylan G. That's a good change up there right. Right on the outside corner by Dylan G while he was behind in the count. Had a great conversation with pitching coach Ricky Bonus about Dylan G. Not only everything that's surrounding this start today, but the overall mental makeup and how much stronger Dylan G feels out on the mound. And it doesn't even have to deal with his arm. Ten months of rigorous rehab, he was ready to leave Port St. Lucie. But the fact that he is stronger mentally and physically, that combination has made him very strong the last three outings. On back liner towards Hesman who leaps in the air to snare it. Uh, good play over there by Mike Hesman, a very underrated defensive player. You know, he gets all the accolades for his power, but he is an exceptional Second defensive base, third baseman. He has excellent range to his left and a very accurate arm. That time he used all six foot five to go up and make the play. Dylan G on the mound today for the Buffalo Bisons. Over a year ago, he was shut down. Ten months of the rehab, but stronger every time out. Leading the team with strikeouts. Six and one record. That's the most for a Buffalo Bison starter as well. One set aside here in the first, facing Pete Orr. Orr hitting 231 on the season with six home runs, 17 RBI. Driven out of play, foul to the left. And Pete Orr's got a chance to hit quite a few home runs this season in Syracuse. That, that ball really jumps in right, right center field in Syracuse. Orr is not noted for having tremendous power, but he hits the ball hard, and, and in that ballpark, you can get some good carry in right and right center field. G having some early trouble with a breaking ball. Stays up and away on Orr. One and two. Pete trying to snap out of an 0 for 8 slide in this series. Granted time as he steps away. We expect both pitchers this afternoon to have a pretty good cadence out on the mound. Or stays alive by tapping it away. Dylan G, a guy that likes to catch the ball, get the sign, and go right back into the windup. Doesn't even tinker a lot when guys are on base. Stays pretty focused on the task of hand, and that's to get the outs at the plate. Or out to second base. Turner's there to stop it. And two down. It yeah, looked like he took a little something off that time. Had Pete Orr out in front. Orr came off a series where he was just two for 19 against Scranton. Had three hits in the series opener against Buffalo. Looked like he was going to snap out of it, but struggled since. Dylan G, three straight winning decisions and has been throwing very good baseball. Six innings this last time out. Scattered the six hits against him, giving up three runs. But the Bisons provided enough run support against Toledo to earn the victory. A 6 and 1 mark overall this year and a 392 ERA. There have been a couple of rough pouch patches for Dylan G. Pulled the string and it's nothing in 2 on Chase Lambin. Look, good curveball looked like that time. Chase Lambin, another guy that's had a tough series. He came in hit in the high 320s down to 311 now is 1 for 12 in this series. Muscles it into right field for a base hit. A two out runner for the Syracuse Chiefs in the first. Well, fastball hit 91 that time for Dylan G. First baseman number 23. And John it looked Weissel. like he tried to get that ball in on Lamb, but he just fought it off and managed to come up with a base hit out into right field. Not a ball that was exactly scorched, but you know, he muscled it out there pretty good. Here's Josh Weitzel. Went two for four last night and got the average up near 300. In last night's ball game, Josh Weitzel found him in the found himself in the middle of a lot of the commotion. First on a follow through, he extended the bat and swept it through, going behind his back. And on the backswing, it came around and hit Josh Tolley on the side of the head. 
Tully would exit the ball game for precautionary reasons out of the lineup today and manager Ken Overfell told me before the ball game he said you know we obviously are going to treat this very sensitive with a head injury and just make sure all the precautions are taken 24 hours 48 hours keeping him out of the lineup could be back in tomorrow when Buffalo opens their series in Norfolk. G hits with a strike on Weitzel and it's nothing in one. But then later on in the ball game, Bobby Livingston was throwing very well and here's the swing. You can see as the bat whipped back through the zone, it comes across and hits Josh Tolley. Tolley would exit under his own power and J.R. House who's doing the catching came in to replace him. Pitch down to the dirt, smothered by House. Uh, nice play on a breaking ball down and in that time. House does a good job to come up with that. Keep Lambin from advancing into scoring position. G working with two outs. Got a runner at first base. Chris Duncan waiting out on deck. On the ground, Mike Jacobs picks it, steps on the sack, and retires the side. Nothing across for the Syracuse Chiefs. And now Steven Strasburg heads towards the mound as Buffalo picks up the bats. Starting nine for the AAA affiliate of the New York Mets, the Buffalo Bisons. Have Jesus Feliciano at the top of the card. Nobody in the International League has swung the bat better this year. A 386 batting average. That has to be some comfort for manager Ken Oberfeld, despite having two strong left-handed bats out of the lineup today and Daniel Murphy and Josh Tolley. Yeah, they're really going to miss those two guys, too, especially with the kind of breaking ball that Steven Strasburg has. But, hey, you, you play with what you got. Here's the defense. It got a lot faster in the last couple of days. Boomer Whiting. Really has some wheels. He's in left field today. And Justin Maxwell will range in center field. Back from the big leagues, just getting optioned back by the Washington Nationals. Well, and there is Steven Strasburg. It'll be his sixth AAA start, but just his 11th minor league start overall. Mike Rizzo, the Nationals general manager, said earlier this week, the next test, the Pittsburgh Pirates wearing a big league uniform. So Steven Strasburg will face Jesus Feliciano, and here's part of the matchup that we really anticipated, not only with the league's best batting average facing Steven Strasburg to start off the contest, but the fact that the Bisons have a very veteran lineup. Strasburg in the 1-0. And he's behind two balls and no strikes. Uh, the first fastball he threw was 97 miles an hour. Comes right back with another 97 mile an hour fastball, but it's downstairs in the dirt. That 386 batting average has climbed as high as 403 just this past weekend. And strike one from Strasburg after falling behind. At 98 on the outside corner at the knees. Thank you very much. The Bisons have seen some real flamethrowers here at Coca-Cola Field this year. Feliciano on the ground to the second baseman. Pedro Lopez slings it across. Now here's another look at it right here. Fastball tailing away. We've seen Feliciano hit that ball between third and shot quite a third and short quite a bit this year. That one right at the shortstop. Pedro Lopez comes up with it. Good accurate throw across the diamond and Feliciano's retired easily 6-3. And that's the M.O. for Steven Strasburg. He induces a lot of ground balls. You are fortunate if you can really square up something off the right hander. And he keeps the ball down well and he you know he's got two seamer when he you know he's got that little sinking tailing action to it. Fastball just slides inside on Justin Turner. Nice pickup off the waiver wire by the New York Mets. Now just over a week ago claimed from Baltimore after being designated for a summit from the Orioles. Sixth game with the Bisons. Strasburg tumbles off the mound and behind two balls and no strikes from the second consecutive hitter. Right. First two guys behind two and oh. But you got a little mar margin for error when you're throwing 97 miles an hour. You don't have to be throwing change after curveballs when you've got that kind of heat and you can locate it. Strike one on the foul ball. And Duke, if you were to jump in the mind of Steven Strasburg, and you can avoid the papers, you can avoid specifically yourself and, and myself in the clubhouse as well, not wanting to talk about what 
is in line five days from now as Turner beats it out in front of the plate. Lambin retires him with the toss and two set aside for Buffalo batting here in the first inning. But in the Strasburg stratosphere, if you will, as he goes to, to the mound for the final time, next scheduled start, the Pittsburgh Pirates, you've only made 11 minor league starts. You've got the stuff. You know you're confident with it. Is there ever any doubt in the final hours before you realize the dream and you go to the big leagues? Well, I'm sure, I'm sure before he steps on the mound at any time, I'm, I'm sure he's got to be, you know, thinking ab about it. But, I mean, he's got to be very confident out there on the mound, the way he's throwing the ball. I mean, opponents are hitting just 157 against him this year. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure, I mean, just that Steven Strasburg feels, you know what? When I'm out on that mound, I'm the boss out there, and I don't, I don't care who it is. You know, I'm, I'm just going to go right after you. Mike Jacobs evens the count, fouling it back in one ball and one strike. I'm sure he'll be excited. I'm sure he'll be a little nervous, but once he gets the butterflies after the first couple pitches, gets rid of those butterflies, I'm, I'm sure he'll be lights out. Every start that Steven Strasburg has made this season, specifically going to the AAA level, momentum and the crowds have continued to build. Blew it by Jacobs bat, and he's behind one and two. 99 on the in-stadium gun. <laughs> well, that's just good old-fashioned country hardball right there. Here it is. Hit it if you can. He just throws a fastball right down the middle at 99. Missed off the plate and evens the count. Crowd buzzing a little bit after that 99-mile-an-hour fastball. Took a little something off that one. 91. Not seen a lot off speed early from Strasburg. There's the curveball. First time today, three balls and two strikes on a batter. Now, to me, that looked like it might have been more another a change up that tank. It's got a little tailing action to it. I'm, I'm looking to see that first big yacker come up there. The 3 2 pitch. There it, was. there it is. And strike three on Mike Jacobs, and he knew it. There it One, was. two, three. Strasburg navigates his way through the first Here's inning in downtown Here's Buffalo. Our contest Mike stays scoreless. And Mike is a home. Last year, 76 victories for the community of Syracuse, the most they've seen in a decade. Some woeful clubs in the Salt City before the Nats came calling. In the playoff hunt last year, and stocked again. Leading the International League, all but 16 days on top of the International League's Northern Division. Now a 31 and 21 record as Dylan G goes to work against the batter Chris Duncan, leading off in a scoreless second. Duncan hitting 225 on the year, does have five home runs playing in Syracuse. G evens the count at one ball and one strike. Three straight winning decisions for Dylan G. And while racking up the wins, posting a 289 over the last 15 days, an earned run average. Nips at the outside corner and just missed. Now two balls and one strike. Duncan, big left handed hitter, six foot five, 230 pounds, a lot of big league time with the Cardinals, a World Series ring. Swings through the offer from G. It's two and two. Nice changeup by Dylan G. Back to back changeups. Goes with a curveball and caught the outside corner for strike three on Duncan. A very similar pitch to the one Steven Strasburg got Mike Jacobs on a backdoor breaking ball that time. Starts it outside, drops it right on the outside corner at the knees. Chris Duncan could not pull the trigger. That's a good pitch right there by Dylan G. There's manager Trent Jewett, the big chief, if you will. He's leading the Syracuse club. Trent Jewett shifting gears after nearly two decades playing, coaching, and managing in the Pittsburgh Pirates system. Managed at Potomac last year before getting back to AAA. Justin Maxwell at the plate, 0 for 5 in the series against the Bisons. Back at AAA in the International League, last seeing Trent Jewett in uniform in Indianapolis. Situation in which Trent Jewett had an opportunity to interview for the Pirates job when it was last open, John Russell being named manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates and Trent Jewett after 
all those years playing professionally and the comfort level that comes with being in the same organization. Thought it was time to part ways, had a window of opportunity to look elsewhere and found it with the Washington Nationals. One two pitch to Maxwell. Tapper to the shortstop, funneled up by Tejada. Two down. A breaking ball from Dylan G that time. He snuck a fastball by him the previous pitch. Now he comes back with the breaking ball, left it up a little bit. Maxwell got on top of it, grounds it to the sure handed Ruben Tejada there. Very accurate arm, throws him out easily at first base. Here's Devin Ivany. The backstop seeing majority of the time behind the plate this year was Syracuse. Takes a fastball strike from G. Good pitch right there, right on the outside edge. I mean, he takes low and out. Shaping up to be an absolutely gorgeous afternoon here in the Niagara Frontier. Chopper again out to the second baseman. Turner with the short hands. That'll retire the side. One, two, and three. After one and a half, Dylan G has kept the Chiefs off the board. Steven Strasburg did it. One, two, three fashion. Bisons in their second year with the New York Mets in player development, but baseball no stranger to the Nickel City. 125 years of professional baseball here in Buffalo, and actually no stranger to the Mets as well. Farm club back in the early and mid 60s. Bisons come into today's action 30 and 23 in a game and a half back of the Scranton Wilkesbury Yankees, and in between the Syracuse Chiefs and the opponent today, Steven Strasburg. The road to the show ends in Buffalo. The early 60s. Dennis Musgraves, a big bonus baby, one of the first $100,000 bonus babies for the New York Mets. Cleon Jones, guys like that. Ed Cranepool played in Buffalo as well. Guy named Joe Hicks, pretty good, pretty good hitter. Left-handed stick. Mike Hespin is the active minor league home run king right now. And he plays in Buffalo and he takes the first pitch from Strasburg inside. And that was a broken bat waiting to happen right there as that fastball ran in in his hands at 98 miles an hour. Good eye by Hesman. The 1 0 pitch. Bent across the plate. Yeah, there's the breaking ball right there. And once again, they're going into the overshift. The shortstop really pulled over the third baseman near the line and the second baseman on the shortstop side of the bag big hole on the right side of the diamond obviously tapped away foul well that's been seen them all now he's seen the fastball at 98 he saw the breaking ball that time it was a changeup uh, how'd you like to have your changeup at 91 look at this home run he hit the other day over the screen down the left field line out onto the road and he's conquered that screen twice in this homestand. That's a 60-foot high screen here at Coca-Cola Field. Rolled it all the way to the line. Sent out a play foul a long way down the right field line. A ball and two strikes on Mike Hesman, hitting 296. I would, I would just love to see Hesman get those arms extended on one of those 98 miles an hour fastballs and see where it lands. The numbers are outstanding. Of course, the Good. home run numbers, RBI slugging percentage, all those are International League best. Let, let Strasburg supply the power on one of those fastballs, and oh my goodness. A 1 2 pitch. And he stays alive and evens the count 2 and 2. There was the curveball again. I was talking to Richie Hebner. Pretty darn good hitter himself in his day, and he was saying that this guy, his curveball is just nasty. If he, just, if he threw nothing but curveballs, nobody would ever get a hit, he said. 2 2 to Hesman. Had the fastball and sent it away, foul. Just stayed alive, a little piece. On that 98 mile an hour heater. Bisons have sent three batters to face Strasburg. How much chit chat is happening right now on the bench as players talk about the pitches that they were able to see? Well, you know, it started out with Feliciano, a left handed hitter. 
Fell behind 2 and 0. Oh. He stayed with the fastball. Fell behind Turner, stayed with the fastball. Blew the fastball by Jacobs. And so, you know, Jacobs was going to want to, you know, get that bat going a little quicker. Well, then he drops a 3 2 curveball in the outside corner for strike three. So these guys in the dugout are watching and they're seeing and then they don't have to talk too much. They can see it firsthand right there. That's a great changeup right there on three and two. No thanks. Not fair. And it's a little bit of a change the way that Mike Hesman has been pitched in this series. He's been baited low and away. That changeup dumped low and inside. Yeah, it's a three two changeup. It starts in the strike zone, dips down out of the strike zone, but he throws so hard. You got to get the bat started so quick that I mean. His changeup is Dylan G's best fastball right there. His changeup is 91. Dylan G's tops out at about 91. Russ Adams with one out here in the second inning. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. You don't have to throw 99, 98. There's ways to get guys out. Just like real estate, location, location, location. Adams in front, two balls and no strikes. In fact, the last time out, one of two losing decisions for Steven Strasburg. Lifted after 86 pitches and five innings worth of work and left with the bases loaded against Scranton Wilkesbury. Two inherited runners scored. So three runs in all by the Yankees top farm club. Oh, no wonder his ERA is up to 1.27. Inflated. Yeah. 1.27. And don't think he didn't want to stay out there and work himself out of that jam either. Taking all the way on 3 0. And in fact, we got a chance during our rain delay last night to watch some of the footage from that start. He tried to talk himself into staying into that game with manager Trent Jewett. Contact by Adams. Lambin near the tarp, hoping for a chance, makes the grab. Nice play over there by Chase Lambin. Right up next to the tar, and he just bends himself over it, and look out there, makes the catch. Nice play. Well, manager Ken Overfill is back once again after spending eight years in the major leagues after debuting with the St. Louis Cardinals, shifted gears, spent five years in Atlanta, had four more years of major league experience before retiring in 1992. Took a couple of years off, then started managing in 1995. First in the Phillies organization, then with the New York Mets. And has been at AAA ever since 2005. And then when the Mets made a managerial move, Obi was brought up midseason a couple of years ago when Jerry Manuel was brought in and on an interim basis, Ken Overfeld joined the staff. And then the next season came back to manage the AAA club. And he has been in Buffalo. Even Strasburg on the mound. He's batting a thousand. <laughs> one for one. <laughs> Axe to foul it back. One ball and one strike. With a couple of RBIs thrown in. Well, he had a great mentor in college. I mean, could you ask for better? Yeah. Tony Gwynn. Yeah. Tony Gwynn. Pretty good hitting coach. A guy that Strasburg grew up idolizing, being from San Diego, California. Gia in front, one and two. Tony Gwynn quoted the other day when the Mets were in San Diego. Said that he's feeling the best now that he has in his professional career. A look at strike three. Back to back punch outs for G here in the third. Well, they gave him a couple fastballs early, and that's, I uh, forget it. Here comes a couple of breaking balls. And that's a little different story when a guy's going to throw you a breaking ball on the outside corner like that. Just go back and save your energy. Bisons.com is your home for everything Bisons. If you miss a game, you can relive all the excitement with an archive broadcast on Bisons.com. Stats, game recaps, video features, and of course, all the game information anytime online at Bisons.com. Bisons are still going to choke off Boomer Whiting. Even though there's two outs and nobody aboard, usually the hitter wants to get a double to get himself in the scoring position. But this guy, a bunt single or a walk, is going to turn into a double in a hurry because he can pick him up and lay him down out there and try to drop one down there. But Hessman is playing tight at third. He's ready. Sheared off strike one. It was a soft line drive to Mike Hessman leading off the ball game. Yeah, and if that would have happened with no strikes or one strike, that would have been a hit. But with two strikes, Hessman was able to back up a little bit. One ball and one strike on Whiting. Played on Monday and went three for three in his Triple A debut. Picked up a base hit in both ball games since. 
Squares around, bunt, third base side. Hespin with the bare hand, off balance throw, not in time. Well, even though you know he's going to do it, Boomer Whiting drops it down. Just a beautiful bunt, deadened it nicely, very softly rolled down the third base side. You can see Mike Hespin. And, and the good thing about that bunt was Hesman didn't have a chance to circle it to get his momentum going a little bit toward first base. He had to feel that ball because the ball was almost right on the line. It was hugging the line. I, I think if he would have let that go, it might have got to the edge of the grass and then rolled into foul territory. But he gave it a shot, and he almost had him. Second two-out base runner in the ballgame against Dylan G. And the first inning, Chase Lambin found a single to right field, and now Pete Orr steps in with the inning extended. Top of the third, no score, Buffalo and Syracuse. Our national audience joining us on Versus. We welcome you to Western New York. With Duke McGuire, I'm Ben Wagner. Speaking of national audiences, and just got a little text in between innings from our partner, one of your predecessors, Mr. Pete Weber, watching the ball game down in Nashville. Pete Weber, a huge hockey guy. In fact, he is the television voice of the Nashville Predators. And of course, a big night on Versus last night. Stanley Cup Finals went into an extra session before the victory. Philadelphia and Chicago. 1-1 one, one pitch. Now the Bison sensing the Boomer Whiting would be looking for his fifth stolen base. Pitch out there and let's see if they go back to back pitch outs. Sometimes you can do that with a guy that, that has a control that Dylan G has. Oh, they got him. Oh, Jacobs can't handle the throw and down to second, Whiting uncontested. Yeah, speed kills and I, I, I'll tell you exactly what happened right there is they had him picked off and Jacobs I think took his eye off the ball a little bit to see where Whiting was going to go if he was going to break on the throw. See how far down the line he was. I think he took his eye off the ball a little bit and he will be charged with an error. Nice move by Dylan G. He had him. He had him dead to rights. The Bisons went through the first month of the season leading the International League in field defense. But they've committed their fourth air of this series. And now an RBI opportunity with two down for Pete Orr. And in front three balls and one strike. A couple errors last night. Second error of the series on Mike Jacobs as well. Swing and a miss. It's three and two on Pete Orr. That's a good changeup right there. Three balls and a strike. He goes with the changeup. Has Orr way out in front. Orr 0 for his last nine at the plate. Averages dip down to 230. And the left-hand batter rides one out to deep right field. Adams gets to the warning track at the wall, and it's two to nothing, Syracuse. An extra breath of fresh air for the Syracuse Chiefs, and Pete Orr is able to capitalize his seventh home run of the season to give Syracuse an early lead. Well, that's a costly error there on the Bisons as Pete Orr got a 3-2. I think it was a 3-2 curveball at time, right in his wheelhouse. Number four. You mentioned, you know, he has six home runs now, number seven. The ball jumps pretty good out in right center in Syracuse. We'll hit that ball pretty darn good right there to hit it out of here. Here you can see it's a high curve ball, and he got his arms extended. The sixth straight start, Dylan G has allowed the opposition to go long. Chase Lambin steps in with extra life. One for one in the ball game. Lehman posted incredible numbers against the Bisons at the beginning of the season. The series in Syracuse went four for four against the herd. Played outstanding defense. Hit a three run homer. Helped Syracuse blow the doors off Buffalo earlier this year and continue the hot start. Center fielder Jesus Feliciano receives out number three as Lambin pops up to the center fielder. But it's Pete Orr to provide this game the score. Steven Strasburg has some room to work with now. The Chiefs getting a two-run homer 
from Pete Orr, his seventh of the season. And really, the defense let down Dylan G. Yeah, you know, you get the first two out strikeouts and then a little bunt down the third baseline. And as we said, speed kills that extended the inning. And after the air on the first baseman, Pete Orr gets a hanging breaking ball. And they know Syracuse did this last night. They had two outs and nobody on. They struck for three in the eighth inning. Here's J.R. House in his first at bat against Strasburg. Seven, eight, and nine for the herd. J.R. House joined the Bisons on May the 14th after starting the season in the Independent League. Played on the Eastern Seaboard with Newark in the Atlantic League. At 345 with the Bears. Had four doubles, eight RBI, caught 16 ball games after spinning off 2009 in the Pacific Coast League. Where he had nine home runs and 127 ball games, catching in the Royals organization. Fastball fired right through the center of the dish on 2 0. Yeah, Looks like House is taking all away right there in that pitch. Make him work a little bit. He has fallen behind quite a few hitters. Oh, look at that breaking ball. Two and two now on house. You think it's more of Steven Strasburg tinkering with pitches? Strike three as he blows him away. 96 mile an hour fastball on the inside corner at the knees. House. Trying to buy a call there, thinking that, yeah, I'll just step over here and take a practice swing. Nope. I'm gone. Ruben Dada is up next. The 20-year-old sensational shortstop made the opening day roster for the New York Mets. Joined the Bison shortly after the minor league season started. Had a fantastic month of May. Has been playing well defensively and pressed into duty primarily at the shortstop position and has also played second base. It'll be interesting what the Mets want to do now with... Luis Castillo possibly headed to the disabled list. He's seeing doctors in New York today. And the fact that Daniel Murphy is headed back to New York to see doctors. Two down on the ground ball out to the second baseman. Yeah, that injury situation in New York, it's, it's mounting as it is here in Buffalo. And Number 18, Dylan G. Perhaps an opportunity for Mr. Tejada, who has played extremely well. I mean, you'd, you'd really be happy for the kid because he has done everything they've asked of him here in Buffalo and more. Dylan G faces his counterpart. Missed for ball one. I don't think Dylan's sticking around here. I, I think that he's going to take a little left-hand turn in this batter's box. Head, head for the bucket. I don't blame you. Don't get me wrong. One ball and one strike. To make his living throwing the ball, not hitting the ball. One and two on Dylan G. Fastballs from Steven Strasburg. Strasburg, the 2009 first overall pick by the Washington Nationals, who have lined themselves up to make it back to back seasons with that first pick. Contact. G at the plate for the Bisons this year. Hitless in eight trips. The one two pitch. Checked his swing. There is the breaking ball down and away. Could you imagine if you ever got a base hit after the first eight guys made it out and it would be his first hit in Triple A? You, you don't think those guys would hear the end of that, do you? Two Ooh. two pitch just missed inside. Judging by the body language of Steven Strasburg, feels squeezed a little bit a couple of times in this at bat, specifically on G. Yeah, I mean the shortstop started for the dugout, and the second, I mean they got a pretty good look at it. Great two pitch, fisted off foul. So Strasburg, who has continued to work out of the windup in his first two and two thirds, continues. And fires low and will lose his base, first base runner. Yeah, he's wondering again where that pitch was. Looked like it had the plate. Must have been low, according to Mark Lalo. We'll take a, a look at it right here. And that got the attention of Trent Jewett as well. 
Uh, he probably just wants to tell him to you know settle him down a little bit. Well, I think he picked up on the same thing that we did as well. He picked up on the body language. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and let's let's you know, come on. The kid's 22 years old. He's human out there. I mean, there's a couple of calls that didn't get, go his way, and he just you know, wondered where it was. I mean, he's he's not a robot out on the mound, but and you, and you don't want him to be. Get fired up, man. Get fired up. You know, that's one of the things that the papers. I don't want to necessarily have blamed Strasburg for being too robotic, going through the regimen of the pregame activities and then talking to the media afterward. But a lot of people like to see more personality from Steven Strasburg. But his job right now is to throw every fifth day and line himself up to go to the big leagues. We are seeing the on the job Steven Strasburg and he's performing. Jesus Feliciano at the plate for the second time. Change up downstairs that time. Only one blemish for Steven Strasburg today. The walk to Dylan G. It's Feliciano to the top of the order. 0 for 1 on the contest. Loops it in the air out to left field. On comes Whiting playing it on a hop. You know, it's vintage. Jesus Feliciano right there going the other way. Serving a soft line drive out into left field. Boomer Whiting with excellent speed he comes on but decides to pull up and play it on a hop which is a wise thing to do. If he comes out tries to make a diving catch that ball gets by him. There's no backup over there where that ball was. That ball gets by him. G's going to score all the way from first base. The ninth hitter reaches base. The tenth batter of the ball game collects the first hit against Steven Strasburg this afternoon. Oh, that's what it was. Ben, he was throwing from the stretch. This guy can't pitch from the stretch. Please. They're batting a thousand against him when he's in the stretch. Yeah, I don't think that's the recipe for <laughs> success. Uh, you don't think that's going to hold, huh? No. No. Good in theory. <laughs> Want to know on Justin Turner. Now one ball and one strike. And now Turner didn't like that call. He thought that might have been a little bit low. Turner in the air out to left. Whiting started back but has it lined up perfectly. That'll retire the Bisons. Base runners for the herd, but nothing across. Syracuse stays in front, going to the fourth. We visit with manager Ken Obergfeld next. Back in western New York, the Buffalo Bisons and the Syracuse Chiefs this afternoon. All eyes focusing on Steven Strasburg and manager Ken Obergfeld. He was pretty dominant the first time through the order until D Dylan G is able to work the walk. What have your guys said and what adjustments are you going to make the second time through the order? Well, you know, he's going to be patient. Uh, he's been working behind in the count. He does have a good fastball. He's been getting his breaking pitch over and uh, when, he needs this, when he needs an out. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're, we're patient. Uh, there's a lot of baseball left. And, uh, you know, he's, he's human. We just go after him. Skip this Boomer Whiting at the top lineup for the Chiefs. He has been a thorn in the side. That little Nat just keeps getting himself aboard. Two outs, a bunt, and a little error there. And then Orr takes advantage of a high breaking ball. Yeah, he's doing, you know, he's doing what he has to do in that leadoff spot. He's getting on base. He's uh, running, making things happen. And unfortunately, we uh, were unable to work the pickoff play. We picked him off, but uh, Jake was unable to hold the ball. But that's going to happen. And then uh, we'll hit the home run. But uh, again, you know, we're, we're going to be all right. This is, we got a pretty good ball club, and, and they're going to battle, and uh, hopefully we can get to Strasburg. And your pitcher, Dylan G, has been fantastic as well. I don't want to take anything away that what you just alluded to from, uh, from Duke's comments as well. As you look at Dylan G and the way he's been able to bounce back after a 10-month layoff, what exactly are you looking for him to conclude and and really develop to do here in 2010? Just stay healthy. You know, I think the key with him is to stay healthy and uh, continue to work on his pitches and uh, get him a little sharper. But uh, you know, the main thing with him is we need to, you know he needs to stay healthy and he's been throwing the ball lights out. Obi, thanks so much for the comments. All right. That is Buffalo manager Ken Obergfell. And as we go into the fourth inning, it is a pleasure as we always do in the fourth and the fifth to welcome the play-by-play. -play of longtime Buffalo broadcaster Duke McGuire. Oh, thanks, partner. Josh White, the first baseman. Takes ball one and change up a little bit low. Fastball's in tight. Two balls, no strikes now. And White, so who's at 296 on the year? Four home runs, 34 RBIs. 
2 0 pitch. Breaking balls inside. Three balls, no strikes. Up, two and one. Correction to the scoreboard. That first pitch was a strike. I thought that might have been a strike. Two and one the count. Outside ball three, three balls and a strike. White's will bounce to the first base when Mike Jacobs, his first trip. Here's the 3 1. Fisted down the third base side. Long run for Servanak, and he's not going to get it. He's going to have to play it on a hop. Fires the ball into the cutoff, man, and the Chiefs will have a leadoff single here in the fourth. Inside out on the swing, Duke, and a long run for Mike Servanak. Mike Servanak has been playing a lot of outfield for the Bisons this season. In the past, we've seen Mike. In a number of capacities on the infield. Yeah, mostly in the at third. Mostly at third in the International League, especially the last couple of seasons where he played in the Phillies organization. Chris Duncan pulls one into the Bison dugout, nothing in one. And, and, and he does play a very deep left field. No question about that. And that ball was able to bloop in in front of him out there. That's where he's most comfortable. And you saw him earlier in this season. Leave a little DNA on the wall out there in left field. Crash into it a couple times in the first home stand. That one's chopped off the foot, perhaps. But followed on the first base side. Nothing in two now on Chris Duncan. We're talking about Chris Duncan earlier when he first came up. Cardinals rookie of the year in 06. 293 average with 22 home runs. He was third Major League Baseball that year with. The home run to at bat ratio one in every 12.7 at bats. Just missed there. Ball and two strikes. First round pick out of high school in Tucson. And of course, his father, Dave Duncan, pitching coach for Tony La Russa. One, two, fastball outside, two balls, two strikes. And he was traded for Julio. Lugo last year, the shortstop of the Boston Red Sox at the time. Now the ex-Bison. Scudero playing short for the Sox. 2-2 two, two, fastball frozen. Strike three called. Duncan could not pull the trigger. Second time now he has been rung up. Center fielder number 25. Fourth strikeout this afternoon. Not quite at that velocity, but a nasty pitch nevertheless. Justin Maxwell bounces short his first trip. Two nothing Chiefs top half of the fourth inning Syracuse out hitting Buffalo four to one the Bisons have committed the lone error in this contest and it has proved costly as Dylan G catches the outside corner strike one called. Justin Maxwell at 239 no home runs five RBI spent a good deal of time in Washington this season. Tough go of it up there. So he's back. Oh, waved at a breaking ball. Snap throw to first, not in time. Maxwell drafted out of the University of Maryland. Here's the 0-2. Slow curve ball swung on him. Missed strike three. Great location there. Strikeout number five for Dylan G. Well, Maxwell in 07, he was the only player in minor league baseball with 25 doubles, 25 home runs, and 25 stolen bases. He's put together some very fine seasons. That's a pretty good combination of speed and power, especially for a big guy. And he is six foot five. Ivany follows it back. He bounced to second base his first trip. Oh, here's the big Independence Eve celebration. Don't forget it right here. Big special. Four tickets, four dogs, four sodas, a souvenir. $99 as 
Ivan he pops it up on the infield the second baseman Turner puts it away. So that'll do it for the Chiefs here in the fourth no runs a hit no errors a man left after three and a half two nothing Syracuse. Well, there you see the AAA All-Star Game will be July 14th at 7 p.m. at Coca-Cola Park. That's Coca-Cola Park in Lehigh Valley. And, well, it'll be at Coca-Cola Field, July 2012. Get more information, visit Bisons.com. Bisons held the first AAA All-Star Game here, and it was outstanding. The opportunity to do the PA that night here, and it was SRO. Great crowd on hand. That was back in 1988. Former Bison skipper Marty Brown was playing in that ball game. Marty Brown, a manager in the Pittsburgh system, along with Trent Jewett, so they've known each other for many years. Marty managing in Japan the last few years. Now Mike Jacobs will get another look at Steven Strasburg, and he takes strike one. Jacobs called out on strikes on a nasty 3-2 curveball his first trip. Well, one hit on the ground sharply towards second base. Orr is up with it. Over to first in plenty of time. Leadoff man retired in the fourth. Now well, here's the hammer. Third Mike Hessman, 18 home runs, Hesman. 55 RBIs. Well, he's just leading pro baseball. 10 times, 20 or more home runs in a season in the minor leagues. 329 career home runs. Ben told you he is the active minor league baseball leader with 329 home runs. 140 over the last five years of playing in the Detroit Tigers organization. That All was, that time in Toledo. That was high heat right there. Tied him up. Fastball up and in at 97 miles an hour. Mm. The 0 1. Fouled straight back. That one might have been the best pitch that Hesman's going to get here. There's another fastball. That one at 99 miles an hour. Great crowd on hand here this afternoon at Coca-Cola Field, despite the fact that it was very overcast this morning and heavy rain last night. Hour 58 minute rain delay in last night's contest. Now you're deep in the hole 0 2 against this guy. That is a major problem. Well, let's see. You just saw a 99 mile an hour fastball. Got a piece of it. Threw a 97 mile an hour fastball by up and in. Well, now what do you got? Another fastball? Get a breaking ball. You get a change up. He's got many weapons and can't get on the same page with the, the catcher. Ivan he heads out to the mound. Now he's jogging back. Russ Adams is waiting out on deck. And one thing that Steven Strasburg now has the ability to do is call his own game. That's one thing that he had to make the transition and become comfortable in doing. And the fact that if he didn't feel comfortable throwing a pitch in a given situation, he could shake it off. Once chopped wide of the bag at third, the overshift still on for Hessman. When playing at San Diego State, he said the pitches were always relayed from the dugout to the catcher and then sent on to him. Didn't have any freedom out on the mound. Now, well, whoever's called the pitches must have called him pretty good. He had 23 strikeouts one game against Utah, and, and that was a one nothing win, so there was not much margin for error there. 23 punch outs. That one's hit out to our deep left center field. It was a breaking ball. Maxwell on the run, so is Whiting, and Whiting is going to get there and make the play just shy of the warning track out in fairly deep left center field. The deepest ball batted in this ball game so far and look how far off balance Mike Hesman found himself prior to making contact and still able to drive it out to left center field just shy of the track. That's how much that breaking ball went away from him that time he really had to stretch out to get us that's why that ball didn't get out of here I mean we've seen Hesman hit a lot of home runs here 13 of his 18 right here at Coca Cola Field Adams takes inside ball one. Adams popped up to the third baseman his first trip. That one's popped 
foul third base side out of play. Ball and a strike now in the Bison right fielder. Adams normally. Played mostly the infield position. Out of second base. He's played some short. But a lot of right field lately as the one one is pulled wide of the bag at first. Look out down there just by the catching error in the buys and bullpen popped into the seats back out onto the playing field. A lot of the reasons that we see Mike Servanak play more in the outfield along with Russ Adams in the corner positions. Bisons have two of their staple outfielders from the opening day roster now on the disabled list. Fernando, Fernando Martinez went on the disabled list. And so did the center fielder Jason Pratty now a couple of weeks back. Both with hamstring injuries. And both expected to be out for a significant time. Two, two breaking ball misses and the count goes full. Jesus Feliciano's been playing mostly center field for the last week or so. Payoff pitch. Another breaking ball. See ya. Adams knew it. Just locked him up with that breaking ball. Could not pull a trigger. So that'll do it for the Bisons here in the fourth. They go in order. The score after four at Syracuse 2, Buffalo nothing. See some of the injuries that the Bisons have sustained. Left hamstring for Martinez. Friday with a right hamstring. Uh, Cintron hurt his wrist diving for a ball in May. Josh Choley still a little bit nicked up too. He has had a tough homestand. Got hit in the head with a, a backswing yesterday. He's, he's followed a ball off his foot. He's been hit by a, a pitch in the foot. Got a foul ball off the knee. As Lopez drills one out toward right field, Adams drifts back, reaches up over his head to make the catch. And here's the Mur uh, Murphy injury yesterday. Hessman picks up the ball. They try to get the 5 4 3 around the horn double play. Could not turn it. And But watch it. See, there was the slide. And then he stopped the slide and went into a roll block out there at second base. And Leonard Davis took the knee out on Daniel Murphy yesterday. Davis not in the lineup here this afternoon. Davis isn't in a lineup and it looks like Daniel Murphy will be out of the lineup for some time as well. He's back to New York today being evaluated at the hospital. Strasburg follows the first pitch out of play first base side. Breaking ball swung on a missed strike too. It's a high breaking ball that time. Dylan G is not going to want to throw that pitch to anybody else in the lineup. I'll tell you that. That's drilled out toward left center. Feliciano is not going to get it. He's going to have to play it on a hop. Strasburg now two for three on the year. Maybe like Catfish Hunter. You know, they, they paid him one year, they paid him like $95,000 to pitch, and he, he's throwing 5000 for his hitting. You know, make it an even $100,000. <laughs> Catfish Hunter was a good hitter. Anything on the field this guy can't do? <laughs> well, we saw him at the top of the telecast, you know, start the 1 6 3 double play. He's given up one hit through four innings. That's pretty good. And of course, now he comes up with a base hit. Back to the top of the order in Boomer waiting, and that's good because now he's going to clog up the base paths on Boomer. Breaking ball in there on the switch hitter. Strike one called. Boomer waiting. Six for 12 in this series against the herd. A couple of walks. Four stolen bases, scored three, knocked in five. Takes a change up for strike two. And this is out of the clear blue sky because Boomer Whiting was not hitting well in A ball when he was called up. It's amazing what guys have been able to do when given the opportunity. A change of scenery. Sometimes it's leaving an organization. Sometimes it's just, hey, go up here, fill a role. I don't know, Marcus Scudero was that way here in Buffalo. Uh oh. Jacobs launches one into left field. A little chopper to the first base when he rushed his throw at second base, thinking he might get a double play, but you're not going to double up Boomer Whiting on that ball. Make sure you make a good throw in and get it out. You can see a breaking ball chopped in the dirt, and that's out of here. 
A short arm throw by Mike Jacobs airmailed over the second base bag. Second error on Mike Jacobs this afternoon. Dropped a pickoff throw. I started to say Boomer Whiting. He, he had 138 stolen bases and 277 ball games coming into today's action. That's one every other game. That's a, a Louisville. We played in the College World Series in 07 and in 07 he led the nation in stolen bases. 73 stolen bases in a college season. That is a lot of stolen bases. And Pete Orr steps in Orr has provided the margin of difference in this ball game. Two run homer back in the third inning. That's how we stand. All the scoring thus far. That's outside. It's a ball and a strike. One one pitch. Change ups outside. Two balls and a strike. Well, as fast as Boomer Whiting is, he, he's kind of a little, little guy out there. One of those, one of those guys that you call him like a little gnat out there on the base pass. I played with Ron Lafleur when he came out of prison. He was 225 pounds at six feet tall. You couldn't pinch an ounce of flesh on this guy. He was built like Samson. That's outside, and he was he ran like, like that. Only better. I mean, it, it was in one step he was at full speed. It was unbelievable. He stole over 90 bases for Montreal when you're in the big leagues. But boy, could he pick him up and lay him down. Three one pitch outside ball four. Well Dylan G is pretty stoic on. On the mound for the Bison. I can't imagine. The way that the air has prolonged this inning. And really two in this ball game. That have prolonged innings gave Peter an opportunity to hit the home run and now prompting. Ricky bonus to make a visit out to the mound as well. As the bases are loaded up on the walk that. The Dylan G is that rattled by the situation around him. Well, yeah, nobody warming up in the bullpen. This is just, you know, a little trip out to the mound, settle him down a little bit out there. Still got a chance with a double play ball to, to get out of this inning unscathed. Lampton's got one base hit this afternoon, a single to right. He's also fly to center field. But Dylan G, through the first four and a third, has given up just five hits and two runs, and they were both unearned runs. Walked one, struck out five. And chorus and the largest fireworks the season. And there's the Bison's website right there, bison's.com. The post game recaps, highlights, promotions, tickets, do a little online shopping. Bison's.com. And I think a lot of people here this afternoon got those tickets online so they wouldn't have to wait in line. Excellent crowd here this afternoon. The lower bowl just about filled from foul pole to foul pole. Here's the pitch to Lambin. Breaking ball. Big swing and a miss. Strike one. Chase Lambin at 313 now after that base hit back in the first inning. There's a good look at Coca-Cola Field. Not a lot has changed in the configuration of this ballpark over the years. Opened its doors in 1988. The walls have been brought in just a little bit. Around center field and at the base of the big board. In vintage footage of the ballpark when it originally opened, a huge bleacher section started to wrap around from the right field foul pole to where a berm is now. Yeah, right where Heron's Landing is, is that one's down low. Lambin came in today, the number six hitter in the league. Yeah, they used to be all metal bleachers out there where Heron's Landing is out to the berm. Much more of a minor league field. Remember when this ballpark was originally opened in 1988, Buffalo still on the list for major league expansion. One two little tapper right side G is going to come up with it. He's going to have to take it himself. He'll race to the bag ahead of Chase Lambin, but on the play, Steven Strasburg will score. It'll be a three nothing ball game. First baseman number 23. In between her, right side of the mound, Jacobs came in. G going over, had an easy hop to handle, just kept momentum. Now this is a big hitter right here for Dylan G and the Buffalo Bisons. They're down three. Base hit here puts him down five, and that is a tough road to hoe against this guy on the mound. 
Of course, he will be limited to an X amount of pitches this afternoon, about 90 pitches or so. Six innings, whatever comes first. But this bullpen has been lights out for Syracuse in this series. Outside ball one to Whitesell, who has bounced to first and single to left. 298 hitter on the year, four home runs, 34 RBIs. Five for 14 in the series, and he takes a fastball for a strike. Long look in by Dylan G. Here's his 1 1. Down low, two balls and a strike. Change up downstairs that time, try to make him. Expand the strike zone. Does have first base open, but he's got another dangerous left handed hitter on deck in Chris Duncan. He has had Duncan's number this afternoon thus far. On the outside corner, strike two called. Another changeup and a beauty. Timeout is asked for just as Dylan G was ready to unload. Looks like Weitzel's trying to wipe the sight out of his eye there. Because that was a, a late timeout granted by the home plate umpire. But a lot of times, you know, if you see somebody reach up for their face, and you're right there. You're right on the inside corner. You're setting up right there, the home plate umpire. He will grant it because of that. Two two launched out towards center field Feliciano will drift back a lot of room out there and that ball is going to be caught right at the base of the wall Ball carried well pretty good power by White so so that'll do it for the Chiefs they pick up a run on a hit and an air a couple men left three nothing Syracuse now Steven Strasburg has been as advertised thus far here this afternoon through four innings, just one hit. And there he freezes Jacobs with a breaking ball in three and two. There's a great changeup striking out Hessman. There's the fastball there. Another curveball for a strikeout. And then he's up at the plate. He's going to dump a base hit out in the left center field, come around to score a run. He's two for three now at the plate this year. And he'll be facing Mike Servanek, J.R. House, and Ruben Tejada, the six, seven, eight hitters for Skipper. Ken Obergfeld here this afternoon. Servanek's been up once, bounced to third. Servanek, a Triple A All Star the last couple seasons in Lehigh Valley, hitting over 300. Oh man, locked him up with a breaking ball, strike one call. No thanks. Watch this. Oop. Pull the arms in, and the ball's right down the chute. And he fists one over the head of the shortstop into left field for a base hit. So Servanek comes up with a knock on a 95 mile an hour fastball, and the Bisons have the leadoff man aboard. Nice to get the leadoff man aboard. Both times Buffalo has had runners today. It's happened with two outs. The walk to Dylan G. And Jesus Feliciano went the other way for his base hit in the third inning. Strasburg stranded them both. Now let's see what they can do with an opportunity. House coming around. Ruben Tejada as well. J.R. House called out on strikes his first trip, and he takes down low. Ball one. Strasburg, he can get a lot of ground balls. House, a good double play candidate right here. If you can get him to hit one on the ground. A little stirring around out on the buys and bullpen, but a little early to pinch hit for Dylan G. It's only the fifth inning as that one's down low. Two balls, no strikes. J.R. House at 227, no homers and RBI. That's just 22 at bats for the Bisons. Ben told you earlier, picked up out of the independent league, playing at Newark. Swings through it, two balls and a strike. 
change up on 2 and 0 oh at 90 miles an hour. How about the location too? Can't do anything with it. Nothing. It's foul tipped. They got a piece of Devin Ivany, the catcher. I always have to pause when I try to pronounce Ivany. Well, Bobby Parnell just left your screen. Manager Ken Overfell and Ricky Bonus told me before the ball game, everybody's seen significant work the last couple of days, so nobody has to throw innings today. Just outside, and the count goes full. But if Buffalo's bullpen were to select a couple of individuals to appear in today's ball game, Bobby Parnell is somebody that has the opportunity to appear in the ball game. John Lujan, you saw stirring around a moment ago. Payoff pitch. Skied out towards center field. Maxwell's there. Reaches up over his head, puts it away. One down here in the fifth. And Bobby Parnell has been lights out for the Bison. He has really thrown well his last, oh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten outings. He's been outstanding for Buffalo. Starting to throw the ball where he wants to throw the ball. His control has been very good. As Ruben Tejada steps and he bounces to second base, his first trip. Tejada. Just 20 years old. He has really been solid for the Bisons this season. Hitting 292, playing a great shortstop, and he takes a breaking ball in the outside corner. Unhittable, strike one. You might as well take that pitch. There's nothing you can do with it. If you do hit it, it probably be a double play. Ball downstairs like that. Stays inside. That's a ball and a strike. Out of it, very, very steady at shortstop. Makes all the plays, no question about that. And you know, it's very out of play first base side. He's not a flashy guy out there. He's very solid defensively. He's not real flashy. Gets the job done though. has been forced to go back to his right field balls on the backhand and of course circle come forward and really has made every challenge Yeah, turns a double play bounced up there nice stop Ivany change up down the dirt Three runs, five hits, no errors for Syracuse. No runs, two hits. The Bisons have committed two costly errors. Syracuse with two unearned runs this afternoon. Actually, they really shouldn't have any runs, to tell you the truth, as that one's inside. Pete Orr hit that two-run homer back in the third inning after they had Boomer Whiting picked off. That cost the Bisons two right there, and then Strasburg scored. Should have been forced out at second base as Jacobs throw one into left center field. Here's the payoff pitch. That one's fisted foul. We got a little competition for souvenirs here today. You know, early in the season, some of these night games, a little chilly early in the season. There's, there's not a whole lot of competition, but today, we got some jump balls out there. Lots of outstretched hands going down the lines be behind and around home plate. Oh that's what's going to be chopped over the head of Whitesell into right field going from first to third is Servanak and the Bison will have runners at the corners with one down here in the fifth. This ball gets pounded out in front of the plate and really jumps off the turf 
Weitzel keeping the runner close at first base, drawn in with that play, and had it skipped right over his head. And now the Bisons have a little cooking. Yeah, this is a, a bad thing about playing these National League teams now. You got the pitcher hitting Dylan G instead of having a, a big bopper in the middle of the lineup for yourself. Bison's game, worn and signed jerseys will be auctioned off throughout the game. And Coca-Cola Everybody on the infield on the mound out there. Listening to Greg Booker. Six years in the San Diego big league staff. Had two and a half years as the Padres pitching coach as well. Manager Bruce Bochy. And now the task, execute the plan for Steven Strasburg. Well, the third baseman Chase Lamb will be right in on the grass. Thinking that Dylan G might be bunting here just to get Tejada into scoring position, get that second man into scoring position, but he's going to swing and he falls one back up on the screen. Pretty good cut right there by Dylan G, who drew a walk his first trip. He was the first buys and base runner this afternoon as the first eight hitters were retired. There's the curveball. It stays inside. It's one and one. Chiefs with two and a third, one in the fifth. Buys is look, looking to get back on the get on the scoreboard here in the bottom of the fifth as G Fall tips that one. Gets a piece of Ivany. Ball and two strikes now on the Bison hurler. Well, the pitch count had been very efficient for Steven Strasburg going through the first eight batters. It's been ratcheted up specifically here in the fifth. We've been told between 90 and 95 pitches or six innings, whichever comes first. He's within striking distance. Breaking ball on the outside corner, strike three called. Fourth, check that fifth strikeout on the afternoon for Dylan G. Nothing you can do with that. It's frozen right there as Feliciano steps in. How about these numbers? Are you kidding me? This is 441 to Coca Cola Field. That's after going about his last 0 for 7. He was hitting 470 something at home. He's got a base hit this afternoon, 1 for 2. Takes up high, ball 1. Luciano is bounced to short and single to left center field. One zero pitch. Swung on a missed. Well, this is a test. Good change for Steven Strasburg as his bullpen starts to stir. We mentioned that 90 pitch plateau, 90 95, depending on which report you read. Fred Jewett said 95 pitches when I talked with him yesterday. Up high, two balls and a strike. But it's also going back in consecutive starts. The bases were loaded against Strasburg. He was within reach of that pitch count. So the call was made to take him out of the ball game despite his best efforts to stay in. You see the left hander throwing out in the bullpen. 2 1 breaking ball and a beauty. Strike two called. And I'm sure he wants nothing more to get this third out as quickly as possible. Yeah, look at this pitch on two balls and a strike. He just paints the outside corner with a backdoor breaking ball. Perfect pitch. They stop there as that one's in the dirt and the count goes full. And now taking off for second base. Heads up base running right there by Ruben Tejada. As after Devin Ivany blocked that, he was slow to retrieve it. And it will be a wild pitch as Tejada takes the bag. He had no energy. First look went down to third to check on Mike Servanak, nonchalantly going after the baseball that went down to the dirt. A good job to stop it, turn the skillet over, knocked it down, and then peeked down the third baseline. First, Tejada recognizes it immediately and breaks. And it almost looked out. Oh, that one got in there in a hurry. It almost looked like Feliciano screened him out. It almost looked like he didn't see Tejada. Feliciano was kind of walking right in front of him there, and I don't think he ever saw Ruben Tejada. The good thing, as we said, there's some, some competition for some souvenirs, but the, the bad thing is there's no empty seats. So when those line drafts go screaming in there, more than likely somebody's going to be wearing it. Payoff pitch bounced out towards second base. 
or in plenty of time throws out Feliciano so that'll do it for the Bisons in the fifth no runs despite a couple of hits no errors two left after five complete Syracuse three Buffalo nothing three nothing Chiefs here top half of the sixth inning here to tell you all about it and carry you along with your play by play Mr. Ben Wagner there you see the big league Bisons buddy yeah absolutely Buffalo feeding the New York Mets R.A. Dickey and his amazing knuckleball throws every fifth day the biggest promotion a couple of weeks just into the season when Ike Davis he continues to perform while managing a few growing pains but he had the long ball on Tuesday and helped New York to the victory in San Diego animals becoming a pretty good pinch hitter up there too huh Chris Carter is on that list as well Chris Duncan leads off the sixth inning. Steven Strasburg and the Chiefs stake to a three to nothing advantage in downtown Buffalo. Duncan has struggled at the plate against Dylan G today. He's been struck out twice, both times looking. Three runs on five hits for Syracuse. Buffalo has managed three hits against Uber prospect Steven Strasburg. Oh. Making contact and through the right side, a base hit. Well, that was a bad read there by Mike Jacobs at first base. He did not even take one step to his right that time. He just broke right for the bag at first base. That ball wasn't 10 feet away from him over there. He just broke right for the bag at first. Did not even make an attempt to go to his right. That looked slightly more routine than what it appeared in the result. A base hit into right field for Chris Duncan. His first time aboard brings in Justin Maxwell. G back out of the stretch, fires the fastball inside. Maxwell 0 for 2 today. He grounded the shortstop before striking out against Dylan G. Five strikeouts in total for the Buffalo right-hander. Been superb in his last three starts, earning winning decisions each time out. Balls behind, two balls and no strikes. 26 strikeouts in the last 23 and two thirds for Dylan G. Maxwell wearing the shades as G spins and throws over to the bag. Chase back Duncan. Now well, Duncan, you know he's a big guy, six five, six six, two thirty, but he will run two for four. John Lujan loosening up in the Buffalo bullpen. Good pitch from G. Dylan G's top end fastball we've talked about 90 91 miles an hour. And Severino starting to loosen up on the Syracuse side as well and without Alapa continuing to throw you'd have to imagine the pitch count and inning count within striking distance where Steven Strasburg after completing five innings of work tonight. That sixth inning is still somewhat in question. Eighty nine pitches. For Steven Strasburg and next stop, the shower. Atawapa Severino. You spell it. Atawapa. It's a tough one. Two and two on Maxwell. Takes inside. The count's full. Now let's see if they send Chris Duncan here on a 3-2 pitch, relying on. Maxwell put that ball in play. There goes the runner and the pitch fouled back. I had a feeling they would. Trent Jewett very aggressive in the manager position over there. He's in the third base coaching box. Likes to run. Boomer Whiting already four stolen bases in this series alone. His ball club overall. 51 stolen bases. 72 attempts on the year. There goes the runner again. The 3 2 pitch cut on and missed from his knees. House in the throw high. Handled at second base by Turner. Duncan slides in safely. It'll be the third stolen base of the year for Chris Duncan as Maxwell's retired on strikes. Uh, I think they'd have had him with a good throw that time, but J.R. House tries, opts to throw this ball from his knees. The pitch was downstairs. The ball, you know, would have beaten him by plenty had it been low. I think he'd have been out easily, but throw sailed on him. And Nice play by Turner to get up and haul it in. Here's Devin Ivany who's 0 for 2. 
Infield playing a little bit in on the corners. And I mean, he takes strike one on the outside corner. Has been off the line and a couple of steps back of the bag at third. Jacob's not nearly as far back as what we've seen him in the past. Check swing. Just take it high. J.R. House wants the appeal, but none granted. Two and one as G works here in the sixth. Three to nothing Syracuse. Bisons and Chiefs will conclude their series today and using the biggest stage to do so. Bison's really struggling against the Chiefs. They were four and 12 against them last year and they just one win in five ball games this season thus far. Two ones taken high now behind three balls in one strike. He's got to get that ball down a little bit. Overall though the Bison's 471 and 411 all time against the Chiefs in a series that dates way back. In the air and down the left field line struck pretty well hooking towards the pole and that is a fair ball and home run. Hit the pole. Clangs back into the field of play. It's a two run shot for Devin Ivany and the Chiefs have built a five to nothing lead. You know, we're just saying that you got to get the ball down. And Dylan G has, a, has had a hard time this frame keeping that ball down. Here's a pitch. Just below the belt on the inside third, he turns on it and hits it off the foul pole. The way that that screen ricochets balls back towards the field of play, from the naked eye, it looked foul. But Justin Vogel right on top of it. And yeah, no argument from Servanak or Hessman or J.R. House, who had just as good a look. The second time a Syracuse Chief has hit their first home run in this series. Pedro Lopez did it in the opener. Now pops it up out to right field. Adams is there. And two men retired following the two-run homer by Devin Ivany. His first of the year and 12 driven in for Ivany. Well, Jeff Mandel is off the bench. And Jeff that will get the reaction from the crowd and mixed emotions. <laughs> well, Jeff Mandel is a pitcher, and we saw him pinch hit yesterday. He must be a pretty good hitting pitcher. Of course, Trent Jewett not wanting to waste a pinch hitter here in this situation. Two outs, nobody on. He's going to save his guys for if they need one later on in the ball game. The 0 1 from Dylan G. Now nothing at two. Long balls hurting Dylan G today. Ending extended in the third because of the air after Whiting was picked off. A two run shot here in the sixth inning. Add one in the middle, and it's a five to nothing Syracuse lead as G works himself out of this sixth. Five to nothing, the Syracuse Chiefs out in front of the Buffalo Bisons. The day is done for Steven Strasburg. Five innings of shutout baseball and hit the pitch limit. And that's why he's out of the ball game. Yeah, we saw a breaking ball for a strike three call, a changeup right there, a fastball, another breaking ball. There's a curveball for strike three, and here he comes with a base hit himself out in the left center field. He will come around to score later that frame, and he is pretty much as advertised, my friend. Well, nothing short of stellar here in 2010 for the Buffalo Bisons. Left-handed pitcher Pat Mish joins us in the Buffalo dugout. Pat, from your vantage point, what did you see from Steven Strasburg, and what did the hitters say around the dugout? Uh, you know, what I saw is that he could get all three pitches over for strikes basically whenever he wanted. And uh, looks like a pretty big, solid guy out there, and he's throwing everything for strikes. So it was, it was definitely tough to pick up when that happens. As a pitcher, and you've got the confidence when you're out there on the mound, especially this year, and you can throw every pitch in your repertoire for strikes. What does that do for you building momentum through a ball game? Well, that just gives you confidence as a pitcher. And uh, 
you know, whenever you can do that, if you if you limit yourself to a couple pitches, then the, you know these hitters are too good that they're going to get you at some point. Justin Turner in the air out to right field. Chris Duncan will put it away. Leadoff batter retired for Buffalo here in the sixth. And Pat, you pitched a fine ball game yourself. The other seven innings gave up. Just one earned run, did not have a base on ball seven strikeouts. We saw you working out in the bullpen before the ball game today, throwing in between the starts. Was there anything in particular you're working on out there? Or um, is this is a normal routine for you? Yeah, just kind of normal routine. I mean, sometimes I I try to, to work on other pitches and everything like that. But, um, you know, just work on hitting my spots and, and changing speeds. And, you know, Ricky and I kind of, uh, you know, gives me little goals to work on uh, during those bullpen sessions. And we, we just try to... Uh, Let's try to have fun and, and hit spots and like we're actually in a game. What are some of those goals that pitchers will have laid out either in individual bullpen sessions or even through the course of a season, Pat? Well, throughout, you know, when you, after you're done pitching during the start, uh, usually, you know, if something isn't working for you, then uh, you want to take it to the bullpen so it can work for you next time. Um, and there was just a couple things I wanted to work on. Uh, today was was my changeup, and uh, so so Ricky and I were just kind of working on that. Nothing at two on Mike Jacobs as he steps in against Atawapa Severino. Steven Strasburg is out. Pat Mish, Buffalo left-hander, throwing every fifth day in the Bison's rotation. You know your role when you came out of spring training with the Buffalo Bison's. You were going to help this rotation throw every fifth day, and when called upon by New York, you would be ready. And is there a comfort level heading into this year? Now a full season into this organization after you were claimed by the Mets last year that you have this year? Um, not necessarily. I mean, you know, it's once you go out there between the lines, it's the same game over in, in the PCL as, as it is over here in the International League. Um, so basically wherever you go out, you know, you got you got nine guys playing with you and, and you go out there and try to get as many outs as you can and, and get the team in here so they can hit. She's got a great hitting team, so you know, make them do that as much as you can. Are you in awe of what Mike Hessman has been able to do in such a short amount of time? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, Get in line too, because I am too. <laughs> I've never. Uh, I just when the ball comes off his bat, I've never seen someone hit it that far. It's 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 unbelievable. I I, I don't know. I mean, he's just, he just must have quick hands and and power and, and everything because when, when he hits it it's it just goes it's pretty impressive Mike has been at the plate with 18 home runs 55 RBI this season Severino deals fastball strike on the outside corner now one and two nobody on for Buffalo two outs here in the home sixth inning the Bisons are down five to nothing Pat this team is constructed to be very competitive the long ball has been there there's been also some youth into your clubhouse as well as one of the guys that have been up and down at the big league level and also th through the ranks on the minor league side as Hesman drives oh it out to left field, Whiting pushed back to the edge of the warning track. He's there and will make the catch to retire the side. But, Pat, I, I guess are you kind of serve as yourself as a, uh, as a mentor in this situation as well sometimes? Um, yeah, I mean, if, if the younger guys want to ask me some questions, I, you know, I love talking baseball and pitching especially. Awesome. Um, Pat? So I don't want to cut you off, but I've got to pay some bills. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> no Five problem. to nothing. Syracuse is out in front, going to the seventh inning in downtown Buffalo. Time Warner Cable, home of the triple play. In downtown Our Buffalo, line, plenty of fans enjoying afternoon baseball here in the Nickel City. 26-year-old John Lujan takes over the pitching duties for Buffalo. Dylan G through the first six innings, turns it over to the bullpen. Boomer Whiting, Pedor, and Chase Lambin to face the hard throwing right hander. Noted from Double A Binghamton earlier this year, on the mound for the 15th time this season. Until his last outing, Duke had been lights out, but he struggled a little bit. Yeah, the Bison's uh, bullpen has struggled a little bit in this series and during this homestand as, as well. And uh, be a nice time right now for John Luhan to get straightened out on the round. Down five runs, really no pressure here. Just, you know, go out there. Work on some of the things that you got to get done. Boomer Whiting has been aboard twice today. Stays on the left side. And a fastball strike from Lujan. Lujan has allowed runs in his last three outings. Touch for a pair and one inning of work against the Chiefs on Memorial Day. Fires high. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. For Lujan, when he joined the Bisons up from Double A Binghamton, 
no record, a 2.89 ERA, and his first six ball games with the B Mets cashed in on two saves. Struck out 11 in his first nine and a third worth of work. Raises the inside edge to move in front of Whiting at one and two. Boomer now a base hit in his first four Triple A ball games. Infield single back in the third inning. Beautiful got one. Beautiful one. Then found himself picked off by Dylan G, but the throwing error allowed the at bat to continue to Pete Orr, and he took advantage of every opportunity and cracked a two run homer. Well, Bison's defense did not do Dylan G any favors here this afternoon. In six innings pitched, seven hits, gave up five runs, only two of which were earned. Walked one, struck out seven. The 2 2 pitch on the inside corner and strike three called. Yeah. Whiting goes down looking and Lujan retires his first batter to face him. Yeah, Boomer Whiting, he knew this one is that pitch got into the glove. He just started heading right across home plate. Good fastball that time. He just couldn't pull the trigger. He's leaning out across the plate. The newest hats, jerseys, shirts, jackets, and novelties are on sale at the Batters Box Skip Shop at Coca Cola Field, or you can buy them anytime you're ready online at bisons.com. One set aside here in the seventh inning. Pete Orr stands back in. He put the Chiefs in front two to nothing with his seventh home run of the year. On base in the fifth via the walk. One for two overall at the plate. That home run snapped the slide that had spanned nine consecutive at bats without a base hit. No better way to get yourself out of a funk than leave the yard. Take a nice stroll around the base pads. Luhan even in the count, one ball and one strike. Good pitch by Luhan. One and two. Back to the breaking ball. Can you see the curve ball? Pete Orr, former property of the Atlanta Braves, now with Washington and their player development system. Evens his count by taking up it away. Originally drafted in 1998 by the Texas Rangers. Signed the following season by Atlanta. Made his major league debut back in 2005. Would end up hitting 300 that season. Vaults this one high on the right side. Turner around Jacobs, the first baseman near the line, puts it away. Ooh, the Bronx cheer over there for Mike Jacobs. The fans getting on him a little bit after committing two errors today and not going for a ground wall. Hit about three feet to his right. It is a sports town, my friend. Home of the Buffalo Bills, the Buffalo Sabres, and now in its 125th season. A professional baseball, the Buffalo Bisons. Buffalo trying to return to postseason play for the first time since 2005. Lambert hacking at the first pitch, rolls it foul. Fans in Buffalo are pretty spoiled over the course of a little bit better than a decade when the Bisons had very good ball clubs that were constructed much like this team is. For manager Ken Overfell in 2010. Nice mix of good prospects, some very consistent veterans that have called upon can do a great job at the big league level, but also don't mind being mentors out on the field as well to help some of the younger players blossom. Yeah, Cleveland always did a nice job of uh, signing those six year free agents uh, to mix in with the prospects and the Bisons had a lot of prospects back then because there was no room to go with the Indians at one point in time you know you had Justice Lofton and Manny in the outfield well if you're an outfielder where are you going to play in that outfield and you weren't so that backed up Brian Giles and, and that backed up Jeremy Burnett's guys like that that had a two or three good triple A seasons before they finally got a call a big league not two or three months two or three whole seasons one ball and two strikes. 
Pulled on the ground to Jacobs, down to one knee to stop it. Races to the bag himself. Back-to-back -back plays for Mike Jacobs. Completes a 1-2-3 seventh inning for John Lujan and the Buffalo Bisons. They're down, though, at the stretch in downtown Buffalo. Bisons.com is your home for everything Bisons. The next time you're on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, check out the Bisons. Special access to videos, updated information on the team and promotions. You can find it all by following us on Facebook, tracking the tweets, or watching on YouTube for exclusive content today. Oh, the Buffalo Bisons back at the plate in the home seventh inning. Russ Adams, Mike Servanak, and J.R. House to bat against Atahualpa Severino. One, two, three against the herd in the sixth after Steven Strasburg was lifted, completing his five innings and reaching the allotted pitches at 89. Window of opportunity somewhere between 90 and 95 pitches. And completed that fifth inning of worth of work. No sense for Trent Jewett to send him out and roll the dice, throwing to one batter. Bullpen takes over, and the 2-0 to Adams popped out a play foul. Adams is 0 for 2 in the ball game today. He'll take from Attawapa high. This bullpen has been very good for Syracuse this season. Attawapa Severino racking up the strikeouts, the saves as well. Second baseman underneath it, Pete Orr. Retires Russ Adams. The Bisons have played pretty well here on Sportsnet New York as well. A flair for the dramatic this season. Eduardo Nunez singled against R.A. Dickey to lead off the ball game on an 0-2 pitch. Then the knuckleballer retired the next 27 to face him. Earlier in May, Chris Carter provided a two-run walk-off. And with one word, we can sum up today's action and the fans that showed up in droves. Strasburg. And, of course, a nationwide audience on Versus tuning in and watching today's action as well. Strasburg mania, man. It's here. It has followed him. Next stop, the capital. The District of Columbia and the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Washington Nationals in five days. General Manager Mike Rizzo naming Steven Strasburg in the Major League debut on June the 8th. Servanak lines it out to center field, tracked down by Maxwell. Well, that's too bad because Mike Servan hit that ball right on the button that time. Unfortunately, it carried too far out in the center field, and Maxwell able to make the play. Pitch up in his own. He got on top of it pretty good. Sharply struck line drive, but Justin Maxwell had him played perfect. Bobby Parnell starting to loosen up in the Buffalo bullpen. That's somebody we talked about earlier and how well he is throwing the baseball and positioning himself squarely on Dan Worthen. The pitching coach for the Mets, Jerry Manuel, the manager, and Omar Minaya, all tracking his successes recently down here with opportunity pending in the big leagues. 2-0 oh for J.R. House. 0-2 oh in the ballgame. Struck out looking to begin the third inning before popping up to center in the fifth. Fouls it back for strike one. Buffalo's best opportunity to score in the ballgame today. The fifth, Mike Serbernak and Ruben Dejada had runners at first and third, then second and third base with just one out. In the air to right center field, Maxwell had it played perfectly, shifting over towards the alley. Tracks it down, and Buffalo is done batting in order. Bisons haven't had a hit since the fifth. We're moving into the eighth. All Chiefs this afternoon, five to nothing. It's the biggest show of the year in downtown Buffalo with the Independence Eve celebration. Celebrated with the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra and Chorus. It happens Saturday, July the 3rd. BPO four packs are now available for just $99. You'll get four tickets to see the BPO and Chorus plus the Bisons game. Enjoy four hot dogs during the contest. Slurp down four sodas and pick yourself up a Bison souvenir. It's the BPO four pack in the Buffalo Bisons for $99. Available on Bisons.com. That'd be a good deal. 
Save yourself some cash. Eat four hot dogs, drink four sodas, and you can bring three of your friends. You'll have to watch you eat them and drink them, but I mean, you know, that's okay. They won't mind. They can see a great show. Into the eighth inning for John Lujan, climbing up the bump. He'll face Josh Weitzel, Chris Duncan, and Justin Maxwell. Four, five, six batters. Now it is second inning worth of work. Lujan in a bounce back frame. Went down one, two, and three against the Chiefs. Misses with the fastball outside. Lujan spin off 2009 in double A Binghamton. Three and five with a 4.45 ERA. Formerly property of the Chicago White Sox organization. Spent some time in double A Birmingham. Cashed in 11 saves and earning a career high in Winston-Salem during 2007. He's been primarily used out of the bullpen. He's got good velocity and has tweaked a couple of things working with Ricky Bonus. But this is such a lefty-laden lineup. We haven't seen him drop down to the side. Won't do it against the left-handed hitters, but against the right-handers, he'll start boring in yeah. some of his offerings. Every now and then, he'll, he'll dip down a little bit change angles on those right handed hitters when they're not expecting it. Two and one on Weitzel. Just off the corner. Now three balls at one strike. Well, we saw him for the first time and I think it was Paul Tucker when he was bringing that 96 mile an hour heat. He's I don't know where I got that from. I don't normally throw that hard but he was pumped up that day as triple A debut and he was throwing gas that day. A rule five selection from the White Sox this past December. Lujan locked up in a 3-1 pitch. Line to the gap at left center field. Servanak on to run into the alley. Won't be able to make the play. He'll track it down at the base of the wall. Into second with a double. Josh Weitzel has led off the eighth Turn inning with a runner in scoring year. position. Twelfth double, double, double on the season. Here's the replay of it the pitch is down not a bad pitch he was downstairs but he goes down and gets it and laces it out toward left center field Servanek cut across but there was no way he could catch it so he just went back to the wall to fire it back in lead off man in scoring position here and she's looking to tack a couple more on a chance for Chris Duncan at the plate started off striking out twice looking against Dylan G Bison starter went through the first six innings gave up five runs but only two of which were earned and two out of the seven strikeouts against Duncan Lujan a tad low ball one but Duncan squared up for a base hit back in the sixth inning let off the frame swiped the bag got into scoring position for Devin Ivany but Ivany didn't make him run too hard he left the park a second two run homer hit today. Behind two balls and no strikes on Duncan. I mean, you know, it's it's tough for Dylan G. He gave up 300 runs, and, and you know, Duncan was on board when Ivan he hit the home run. But I think if Mike Mike Jacobs had to do it all over again, he would have taken a couple steps to his right to go after that ground ball instead of breaking right for the bag at first. Two O's fouled back. White's all away from second. Duncan stepping back towards the plate. Started last season in St. Louis. Mentioned that he was traded to the Red Sox organization and wound up playing 27 ball games at Triple A. Now in front, three balls and one strike on John Lujan working here in the eighth. Duncan debuted with the Cardinals. In 2005, before taking home Rookie of the Year honors just a year later in 2006. Now, 28 years of age. In the air to deep left field. Servanak shuffling back to the warning track, looks up, and it's gone. Another two run homer, this time for Chris Duncan. Building Syracuse lead now seven to nothing. Now they've, they've got some left handed hitters that have some pop or with seven home runs Duncan now with six home runs there's a drive to left center field. And it 
just got over the wall there where it's a little bit higher. And we'll see where this ball lands. I don't know if it hit the top of the wall or just past the top of the wall on the, uh, yeah, just, just got over it out there in left field. Ball carrying well here again this afternoon with that wind blowing across from right to left. Third two run homer of the afternoon for Syracuse, a seven to nothing lead. Nobody out and Justin Maxwell takes ball one. Maxwell on the right side of the plate after Lujan allowed two lefties to reach against him. A double by Weitzel and the homer by Duncan. Goes off speed and finds strike one. Well, we thought we'd have about 15,000 here this afternoon. Pretty darn close. 14,774 on hand. Nice shot of the crowd. It's thinning out a little bit now as the Bisons are down 7 nothing, but there was not a seat to be found earlier down in the lower bowl. 1 1 to Maxwell, and there's Lujan dropping down to the side. But he misses now behind two balls in one strike. Record crowds pitching in Syracuse and Rochester when Steven Strasburg goes to the slab. Not near a record crowd here in Buffalo, though. In the air right side, Jacobs gave it a try, but that ball wasn't hit nearly high enough for the first baseman to track down. And that's one of those we were talking about earlier, Ben. We dropped down three-quarter arm slot that time. Trying to make things a little tougher for Justin Maxwell. Two balls and two strikes. Long pause by Lujan. Checked his swing. And it's three and two. 13,115 the last time out on the mound in Syracuse for Steven Strasburg. At over 13,000. Making the majority of his starts in Syracuse this season just under 13,000 pitching on the road for the first time in Rochester off the right side of the mound and under the backhanded attempt of Turner a base hit for Maxwell the first three have reached against John Lujan here in the eighth inning that ball hit sharply right back past John Lujan that time he stuck his glove down but it was too late the ball was already by him Justin Turner tried to make a backhanded play but that ball snuck underneath his glove. Maxwell hit that one sharply. And another trip to the mound. As you look at Devin Ivany. Ricky Bonus is going to the mound. As Jose De La Torre starts to loosen up in the Buffalo bullpen. There's Jose De La Torre. Jose's had a rough go of it lately. Bisons are down seven to nothing and late in the contest it turns into mop-up duty. Lujan just the second hurler used today by manager Ken Overfell. Of course Dylan G started the game took you through the first six innings. Five of the seven runs but two have earned. Until the two run homer here in the eighth for the bat of Chris Duncan his sixth home run of the season. Now he's knocked in 20 the inning continues with Maxwell following with the base hit. Ivan he struck a two run long ball in the sixth inning for his first run of the year. House tracks it down by shutting the mask. Maxwell is going to stay put at first base. Now the wheels have fallen off for the Bisons here. Tight ball game for four or five innings and then. The long ball doing the job for the Chiefs. Now As three said, balls and no strikes three two run homers.
Pours the fastball across for strike one. Lujan clearing his brow. Up and away, that's ball four. And the first four batters here in the eighth inning have been on, two have been cashed in. Runners at first and second with Pedro Lopez ready to step in. Manager Ken Overfill pops off the top step and he'll stroll to the mound and make a pitching change and odds are double switch possibly for the Bisons. Yes, it's definitely going to be a double switch. Before Lopez goes to the plate. It's like he, it's like Garcia heading out to who do we get? Let's see. Seven to nothing all Syracuse here this afternoon. It's the top of the eighth.